Which you guys got another video here for you. Should I connect both CPU power cables to the headers on the motherboard? You can see I'm only using one eight pin uh, cable going into the header on the motherboard and there's a four pin right next to it. So should you populate both of these or is it okay to use one of them? That's what we're gonna be going through in this video. I see this come up quite a bit all over the internet and I thought I'd make a quick video showing you basically what the rule of thumb is here. So here we have two connectors. We have an eight pin power connector. Now, sometimes some motherboards will have one four pin CPU power header. Other motherboards might have one eight pin CPU power header. And then you might have one with one four pin and one eight pin power header like this one. And then sometimes you have two eight pin CPU power headers on the motherboard on more higher end boards. So what should you do? What one should you populate? And should you populate both of them or just one of them? Your eight pin power connector, which is what I've got plugged in on this computer can deliver up to 336 watts of power, which is normally plenty for most CPUs out there, if not all of them that are on the market today. So what is the point of having a second CPU power header? Well, the second CPU power header is generally used for extreme overclocking, providing additional power to the CPU when needed, as a single header might not be enough to handle the increased power draw uh, during the heavy overclocking uh, situations that you might be doing. The most standard use for a single CPU power connector is sufficient due to its 336 watts of power delivery, and the second one is not necessary for probably majority of CPUs you see today. If we take a look at the B550 Steel Legend uh, series motherboard, this is not a high end motherboard. And what I have inside here is an eight pin and a four pin power connector on the motherboard. So if you check the motherboard's uh, manufacturer website, you'll be able to download the user manual or you'll be able to have the user manual in the box when you first purchase your motherboard. And you can see here, it tells you, warning, please make sure that the power cable connector is the CPU and not the graphics card uh, power cable, which is your PCI Express power cable, because this has a different power configuration on that actual cable. And if you go forcing it into that port, you're gonna damage uh, the actual uh, motherboard and probably possibly uh, kill your motherboard. So if your motherboard and CPU both support an eight pin and a four pin connector, you should use the eight pin or both eight pin and four pin connectors to get optimal performance. If we look at the uh, CPU pin layout here on this website, you can see the difference between the GPU power connectors and the CPU power connectors. You can see the CPU power connectors for the EPS 12 volt have all got 12 volt rails along the top of the cable there. And all the gray ones are just ground. So you're getting 12 volts through each of those pins and they are delivering a certain amount of ambage to the motherboard, which then distributes the power to the CPU socket and the CPU. And that should be plenty for majority, if not all CPUs today. So in this motherboard here, we have an eight pin and a four pin. And would you populate both of these or would you just populate the eight pin? As long as you're not populating the four pin, now sometimes the four pin will still deliver half the power as what the uh, eight pin's gonna deliver. But generally the eight pin would be plenty. As long as you're not plugging it into that four pin and then putting a, a power hungry CPU in there, uh, then you should be okay. But you could populate both of these and it will be perfectly fine. It's not gonna blow the board up because the CPU will draw the power that it needs. If we look at this Ryzen 9 9900X, you can see that the power draw or the TDP for this particular uh, CPU is only 120 watts, which should be plenty for that eight pin uh, power connector because that delivers 336 watts or thereabouts. But Intel's processors are a little bit more hungrier than the Ryzen processors right now, and they can demand a lot more power to be given to that particular CPU. So always check the manufacturer's website for the CPU that you're going to be using and make sure you've got a really good quality power supply with plenty of power and give yourself at least 150 watts more uh, power overhead so you've got plenty of power there. And buy a good quality branded power supply which will obviously give you better power delivery as well. 
But if we look at this one here, the processor base power is 125 watts, but the max turbo power for this Ultra 9 is 250 watts, which is pretty beefy. But the processor I have in this motherboard is only a 5600X, which is probably going to only draw uh, 65 watts. As you can see here, TDP for that particular processor is 65 watts, which that 8-pin power connector is going to be plenty for that particular CPU. Now, when the CPU is under max load, that Ultra 9 processor was going to be drawing 250 watts. So basically, if you populated both headers on the motherboard, by distributing the power across two connectors, it can help maintain stable power uh, delivery for that particular CPU when it's under full load. Other than that, you could get probably get away with just using the 8-pin power connector, but if you want more stability, then plug in both of them. So as we know, some CPUs require significantly more power than usual. So if you are an extreme overclocker or your CPU requires more power like that Ultra 9, then you could populate both of those CPU power headers on the motherboard for a more stable uh, power delivery to that CPU. Also, that second connector is there to spread the total power distribution over the two plugs and cables in order to prevent any cables or plugs from getting too hot. So it's going to basically distribute a lot of the power evenly over the two cables that you got. It's best to have a power supply with two 8-pin ports on it and plug those in, two separate cables going into the motherboard rather than using a splitter to distribute uh, two lots of power through one cable because that will then get hot and also the socket where you're plugging the cable into will get hot as well. So other than that, if you have got a really hungry CPU, say 300 watts, you might want to put two of those cables in to distribute the power evenly and give that CPU the power that it needs to stop it, uh, you know, causing any instability issues. And remember, the CPU will only draw the power that it needs from those headers on the board anyway. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone's got their own theory on all of this or their own opinion on it. So share those in the comments section down below. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.